about oh went to resident advisor london meet that, that was a good one right so resident advisor held this really cool meetup um a few weeks ago where they essentially gathered a few people from the london community community people you know promoters uh, club goers um, fans of music djs and stuff just to kind of sit down at a round table and kind of you know speak about some of the topics that we think are prevalent to the community prevalent to the scene which is quite cool and i think essentially it represents a shift maybe in culture a shift maybe in the direction and where boiler room is currently going i think they uh for a long time were basically just a platform right published content now they're essentially kind of turning their model to, no well yeah just maybe yeah, publish content maybe they're a content producer now more so i'm not sure if that's the kind of thing right is that thing right yeah I'm a content producer in a, in the maybe in a sense of um of a boiler room in that same similar sort of a thing which i'm a big fan of let me see if i can find it resident advisor da, da, da. Is it, it was a london party right resident advisor london was it london party or is it london i'm just no, it doesn't matter anyway. But you remember that boy in London party, right? Or the thing they did. So I think they're kind of similar. They're doing a similar sort of thing, which is quite cool to see. So I think they're trying to gain an understanding on, you know, what their audience actually wants and what's actually going on in the club land from the people that are actually there and doing their thing, right? Um, what, what video do they have here? They've got print work. They've got the, the... So even stuff like this, this video was what, from a few weeks ago, right? A few days ago. This is floating points at uh, print works that uh, Resident Advisor put together. And even just like production or product, yeah, production wise, I'm not sure if this is something done in conjunction with like a LWE. I'm not sure if they're still involved in print works or if this is something that <coughs> um, resident advisors are doing as sort of like um, a way to kind of get into event, event production. But I think it's pretty cool. Um, and again, goes to speak to kind of the evolution of the scene and where it's kind of going. Electronic music is booming, booming, booming. So I'll just play some background without the noise just to kind of keep something there. But yeah, um, it was cool, man. We got to sit down. I met loads of cool people. We, um, we essentially went through some questions about stuff that we like, labels that we, we like, parties we were into. It was quite interesting to kind of be in the, in a, in a kind of table, uh, sitting around people, especially who are much younger, who are really, really, really cool, right? They really kind of abide by the hipster codes, right? There was they were a little bit aloof at the beginning. No one was really warm. They wanted to start speaking and exchanging a few LOLs. People started to kind of open up a bit. So that kind of initial frostiness was funny because it reminded me of like, you know, the random night so i would have gone to like a, a gallery exhibition at protein where everyone's kind of acting too cool for school and by the time everyone's got four or five red stripes in them right they suddenly kind of loosen up and they, they want to be your best friend again especially when they got a bit of kept down their system or whatever maybe so everyone was pretty fine after that um but yeah it was um interesting cool topics i think it was interesting to see just how um anti-commercial and mainstream some of the guys were which is weird to see I think London is probably one of the only cities, I think, where for the most part, I'm, I don't know, maybe it's different for other places, but I think for the most part, especially when it comes to music, I think most people are very in tune with what's been played in the radio or just general public noise or pop and stuff, just because, maybe because of Top of the Pops and just how we grow up as kids, you're aware of the general, you know, you know, uh, lowbrow, uh, common denominator, basic bitch music, but then you're also really into what you're into. I think that's a quite cool balance about it, which makes it, which makes the likelihood that you could have a good time at a really shitty club somewhere in the middle of nowhere more likely because, you know, you can balance the two. You can go to an underground party and you can also go to a DJ night at Weatherspoons or something, right? It's all the same thing for you. You just want to have a good time with your friends. Um, but it was weird to see just how staunchly against that group were against it. I think we were talking about festivals and a lot of them were, really against going to uk festivals even though i think that's probably one of the strongest parts of the electronic music scene in london especially with the you know the clubs closing down all over the place and you know local councils going over the top in terms of licensing laws i think the one thing that really makes london unique is the breadth and uh, uh options that we have in terms of festivals you could go from every every anything from like gotwood to you know Houghton to you know uh glastonbury tea in the park whatever this it, it covers all everything right so like you know uh download festival there's so many things there's like how many metal festivals do we have in the uk alone that's just nuts right to consider it you, you probably don't listen to metal right um for the most part it's not the most popular genre out there right it's probably got it's got a very loyal devout following but no one really it's not it's not, it's not how it was when i was in secondary school where people actually listen to metal now people just you know listen to it maybe in passing We've got so many options. So that was weird to hear the kids be so... I'll say they're kids because I thought they were a lot younger than I was, but maybe they weren't. But for lack of a better term, I'll just describe them as kids. It was weird to hear how against they were, how against UK festivals they were. 
but then they were also very much for going on the holiday to places so this idea of like destination festivals was quite big around the group which makes sense in it i think if you're the age is between 18 and 25, right? And you're earning a bit of money, part-time working in a bar or whatever job you're doing, you'd want to get the most bang out, bang out, you want to get the most bang for your buck. So paying, you know, whatever amount of money to go to Houghton and essentially, I, I think what, going to Houghton maybe all in might cost you between 500 pounds or a grand, which is a lot of money. But if you go to, if you, you could probably book a ticket, book a, an idea for Primavera. I could probably get a ticket, book a flight, get an Airbnb and have some spending money left over. For 500 pounds right and and you're in barcelona right you're in an amazing city great weather great food cheap beer so i get the tendency to kind of want to go abroad instead of kind of going to go to festivals in the uk because you know they're not, not not a lot of value for money if you've seen the videos of people from all, at all points east you'll know just how shitty the sound production is in some of these places sometimes it's to do with a festival sometimes you know they take the piss and kind of take everyone's money charge you exorbitant amount, amount on price on the tickets and then you know frisk you aggressively at the, at the gate and then play really low music or sometimes it's the fact that the local council has essentially put a limiter on the sound so they can't go above a certain decibel so if you're standing at their back or standing at a weird position that weird angle you're just fucked i remember watching videos of people from all points east recording it and it just sounded horrible it sounded like someone was playing the song the music out of a bluetooth speaker somewhere at the front right just horrendous sound so it can, I can understand it, but that was strange. I also thought the fact that none of them went to n- none of the big clubs anymore or at all was it interesting. They didn't go to any of the big, you know, print works, XOYO, um, Phonux, uh, the, 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 even Fold was kind of getting a bit of weird reputation. I don't know what it is about them. But again, I think I'm just not at the age where I'm willing or ready to kind of go to railway house races all the, all the time every weekend. I think that happens when you're younger and you just want to float around. I think the idea of going to like, you know, in the middle of nowhere, of Northwest London, to warehouse party somewhere is a little bit, mm, a little bit funny style for me, especially in terms of the distance and having to get back home. You know, I'm not willing to get a 13 night buses to get back from that area. I'm going to get an Uber, which is going to cost me another 30 quid, which takes money out of my night, blah, 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 blah. So it's just something that you kind of age out of. So that was interesting. And I don't know, overall, pretty cool, man. I got some cool insights into promoters that people are talking about that are good. So that was quite cool. And again, it's always nice to hang around with people that are into stuff as much as you are, right? That was quite cool. Mm. Fold got a lot of good reaction, I think, from people there. People talk spoke well about Fold, which is great to see because it's basically our only club in London that's kind of worth speaking about in that level. So that was great to see. And obviously, the, and you know, you know, the other thing that got a lot of love, uh, The Yard and uh, Mixed Garage. Everyone spoke really favorably, especially at The Yard, about how they create a safe space, you know, for all the freaks and weirdos of... Um, that little scene, which is great. That's part of the reason why I love to go to the yard, really, isn't it? Because I think I mentioned it in, the, in a roundtable. With, for lack of a better term, you don't really see any more weirdos anymore. And that was makes London so interesting. The fact that you could go out and see the, the most amazing, the most glamorous club kids, you know, partying um, next to, you know, hedge fund managers and stuff and accountants, right? Nowadays, everyone's kind of vanilla. So I think the yard is cool because they have amazing drag nights. They have amazing queer nights. Uh, just amazing just nights that kind of cater to to a certain demographic that they kind of create a safe space for and i think it's really excellent to see man really really cool to see so i'm a big fan of it. so yeah big up resident advisor for doing that um that was cool people were getting wasted at that round table as well because they had the you know they had the, they had a good they had the good little they had the little company car behind the, the till so that was cool so yeah big up for them for doing that and again we're interested to see where those insights will lead i'm assuming they're going to do something similar to a boiler room and probably put on some parties put on a festival um, they did that 24-hour thing in, in Fold recently. Do you, remember, do you remember about that? They did like a 24-hour party where they had like um, uh, talks and they had like, you know, um, discussions, live shows and stuff. They had different rooms open in Fold. That was really cool. I heard that they had a little kitchen thing open that basically fitted 20 people in it. That was really cool atmosphere. So yeah, um, I wouldn't be surprised if we see Fold moving into that sort of stuff. And maybe overall, I mean, so Resident Advisor, overall, we might even see Resident Advisor doing something like... Um, uh, actually opening their own bar or like space that would be cool to see as, as a next frontier like their own sort of like production studio imagine if they did that that would be awesome i would love that if that happened i really 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 would love that man i think that would be flipping amazing to see um but yeah apart from that nothing else in it same old same old man um i'm interested to see where that goes again great inside again cool to hang around little cool to just hang around the kids who are you know super cool and kind of you know making their mark and 
kind of carving their identity and finding their tribe. It was just quite endearing to watch it overall. I think some people would have been a bit cringed out by it and, you know, freaked out of how, you know, really up there and ass these kids were. But I liked it, man. I quite like that whole, I quite like um, snobbery sometimes in some, in some points. I quite like it. This idea that you're, you know, you're against, you stand for something. Like, no, I don't go to those kind of things. I'm this kind of guy or girl. I think that's quite cool. Um, people are just too apt. So when you ask somebody what kind of stuff they like, innit? I like everything. So like, no, tell me what you don't like or tell me what you do like. Be specific. So those guys were very, very specific. I kind of got the message straight away. I made a couple of suggestions. I saw the, the room go a bit like, you know, throw some faces, which was funny to see. But, you know, whatever, whatever. I'm an older guy. I like taking the Ubers places and making sure people places have cloakrooms and toilets and shit, you know what I mean? Um, the days of me climbing over a school gate to go to like a warehouse party is kind of well and truly done, man. That's over with. But yeah, that was a good time. 